Over the past two decades, India's international stature has been quite strong thanks to its relatively effective leadership role with the countries of the Southern Hemisphere for emerging and developing economies but not associated with any great power bloc. India is hosting the G20 this year. Prime Minister Narendra Modi wasted no time in a wide range of diplomacy aimed at cementing the South Asian nation's position as a global player. Since the outbreak of the conflict in Eastern Europe, India has remained neutral, continued economic cooperation with Russia and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. Western countries sometimes lightly criticize India for buying cheap oil from Russia. They did so because they all understood that India was saving Europe from a nightmare of recession and inflation. Prime Minister Modi gained international attention at the end of May when he met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on the sidelines of the G7 summit in Hiroshima. In his first face-to-face -face conversation since the outbreak of hostilities, Modi told President Zelensky that India would do whatever it can to resolve the conflict. After the G7 summit, Prime Minister Modi flew to Papua New Guinea to attend the Forum on India Cooperation with the Pacific Islands, held for the first time in eight years. Then he went to Australia with his first visit in nine years, receiving a warm welcome from citizens of Indian origin. India has enhanced its international standing by harmonizing developed and developing economies. Mr. Modi emphasized to the leaders of the industrial nations the importance of solidarity among democracies and sympathized with the bloc of poor countries struggling with inflation, hunger, and climate change. Some call it multilateral diplomacy, others see it as the art of pleasing all. Mr. Modi has just made an official state visit to the United States on June the 21st. Washington used this opportunity to divide India and Russia, New Delhi's main arms supplier. During Modi's visit, the US and India signed a series of agreements to jointly develop engines for jet aircraft to separate India from weapon suppliers from Russia. However, India shows no signs of restricting large-scale oil imports from Russia. In May 2023, India bought 1.96 million barrels of Russian crude oil per day, setting a record for eight consecutive months. Last December, the G7 and the European Union imposed an embargo on Russian crude oil by sea. In addition, the EU in February 2023 banned the import of refined petroleum products from Russia, including diesel and jet fuel. These steps are intended to limit massive revenue from energy exports. India began increasing oil imports from Russia in April 2022, less than two months after the outbreak of the hostilities. As of March of 2023, India imported an average of 1.02 million barrels of Russian crude oil daily. According to India's Ministry of Trade and Industry, this is 11 times higher than a year earlier and accounts for 20% of the country's total oil imports. As a result, Russia became India's largest oil supplier, rising from 10th place a year ago. Following Russia is Iraq, supplying 1.01 million barrels per day, and Saudi Arabia, 790,000 barrels per day. India has to import 80% of its domestic crude oil needs. Increasing oil imports from Russia brings India at least three benefits. Controlling inflation, improving the trade balance, and diversifying supply. In terms of inflation, the benefits for India from Western sanctions on Russia are clear. India buys Russian oil at an average price of 83 US dollar a barrel in fiscal year 2022, compared to 90 US dollar for Iraqi oil and 100 US dollar for Saudi Arabian oil. India's trade balance was supported by increase in overseas sales of petroleum products. While oil prices has risen worldwide, it has been relatively cheap to import oil from Russia, helping India to reap the benefits of oil-based exports. Export value of refined products from oil equivalent to 54% of total crude oil import value in 2021. This figure rises to 59% in 2022. 
India has diversified its oil suppliers and its reliance on three major producers in the Middle East, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates has fallen from 53% to 47% in the year 2022. At the first glance, Mr. Modi's India-first policy seemed to have helped Russia get around Western sanctions, but some studies suggest it also benefits many other countries. Why India has sharply increased its imports from Russia, its purchases from other major suppliers have decreased, freeing up more oil for countries in Europe and North America. In fact, India has seen its imports from six out of its top 10 suppliers drop in fiscal year 2022. For example, down 49% from Nigeria, 24% from the US, 18% from Kuwait, and 10% from Iraq. This country increased their export to countries other than India, including G7 members and the EU, keeping oil prices stable. The higher the price of the oil, the easier for the EU to fall into recession. In addition, India also refines a large part of crude oil imported from Russia into products to sell to countries that impose sanctions on Russia. Many experts call this the oil detour. However, it also has the effect of reducing global energy prices. For example, India's shipments of petroleum products to the Netherlands have grown by 70% in the fiscal year 2022, making India the leading supplier to Europe's oil trade hub up from the third one year ago. India petroleum products seem to have made up for the shortfall in EU supply due to the interruption of the pipelines from Russia. Some argue that India is playing a big role in regulating the flow of oil and petroleum products globally, as it is the world's third largest importer of the crude oil as well as the world's fourth largest exporter of petroleum products in the world. Gasoline, petroleum and heavy oil are all made from crude oil at different stages of refining. Many oil-producing countries simply export any excess. India, although not having large oil reserves of its own, has developed its oil industry by exporting refined oil products. Last financial year, crude oil was India's largest import, while petroleum products account for the largest share of exports. Major Western oil companies dated entering India after World War II. However, in the 1970s, the Indian government confiscated their facilities, divided among three state-owned companies. Indian Oil, Bharat Petroleum, and Hindustan Petroleum. India began to liberalize its economy in 1991. Reliance Industries and Asa Oil, both affiliated with local corporations, entered the refinery business with the aim of capitalizing great demand in the country. Reliance currently operates the world's largest oil refinery with a daily capacity of 1.24 million barrels in the state of Gujarat. Asa Oil was sold to major Russian oil company Rosneft in 2017 and renamed Nayara Energy. Together, Reliance and Nayara now account for a third of India's daily refining capacity at about 5 million barrels, the world's third largest after the United States and China. When New Delhi want to control fuel prices as a way to reduce inflation or win more vote for the ruling party, these two private sector companies have gradually shifted their focus to overseas markets, paving the way making India a major exporter of petroleum products. India's refusal to join the Western sanctions imposed on Russia makes the US and Europe uncomfortable. But the Western countries are really worried about India's non-compliance like that is still a question mark. A quick look at the differences between Western sanctions on Iran and Russia should make that clear. In 2018, the United States imposed a ban on oil import from Iran because it suspected Tehran was developing nuclear weapons. The measure was expanded to target oil buyers from Iran, while eight countries, including Japan, China, India, and South Korea, were initially exempt. They all joined the embargo the following year currently still in effect. In contrast, the Western sanction against Russia, which only set a price ceiling of 60 US dollars per barrel, do not apply to India. The difference stems from the amount of oil exported by the two countries. 
Prior to the ban, Iran shipped about 3.5 million barrels per day, a volume that could be offset by increased production from top oil producers, such as Saudi Arabia or the United Arab Emirates. But Russia's daily exports are about 8 million barrels. If that supply disappears, the market could be irreparably damaged, dealing a huge blow to the world economy, especially Europe. As a result, the G7 and the EU have quietly let India buy Russian oil or criticized it silently in order to prevent a full-blown crisis. India plays this role perfectly. After Russia attacks Ukraine, some experts warn, oil prices could reach as high as US$200 a barrel caused by sanctions, but after picking above US$120, prices fell back again to about $70. Mr. Mika Takehara, Head of Research and Analysis at the Japan Metals and Energy Security Organization said, The global oil market can cope with severe geopolitical uncertainty through a dynamic adjustment mechanism. This mechanism would not work without India's role. Neither the G7 nor the EU have publicly acknowledged India's contribution to price stability. But it is undeniable that India played an important role in averting the global economic crisis. India may not have intended to play that role, but the impact of its policy shows India's growing influence and helps people realize why Prime Minister Modi is so determined to pursue strategic autonomy despite international pressure. During his visit to Thailand in August 2022, Indian Foreign Minister Subramaniam Yaisanska defended the decision to increase oil imports from Russia, seeing it as the best way to serve the people. He said, Today, every country is trying to get the best deal possible for its citizens, to try to lessen the impact of high energy prices. That's exactly what we are doing. According to some experts, behind the statement of the Indian Foreign Minister is the history of close relations between the two countries. New Delhi and Moscow signed the Treaty of Peace, Friendship and Bilateral Cooperation in 1971, a sort of military alliance. Russia and India have supported each other as they have been criticized by the international community for their armed actions. For example, when Moscow sent troops to Afghanistan in 1979, or India's wars with Pakistan in Kashmir and Bangladesh, Russia has supplied two-thirds of the weapons that India has imported since 2000. Their strategic cooperation has extended to other areas, such as nuclear energy and space. Given the close relationship, India buys a lot of Russian oil does not surprise other parties. At first, India imported little mainly due to logistical and transportation difficulties. Specifically, shipping oil from Russia to India takes three weeks by 100,000-ton tanker from port in the Black Sea and about a month from port in the Baltic Sea. In contrast, the 300,000-ton ship carrying oil from the Middle East to India takes less than a week. In general, importing oil from the Middle East is beneficial in terms of time and economy for India. Shipping over longer distances, which means higher insurance costs and less flexibility, makes Russian oil less attractive than oil in the Middle East. But a sharp drop in Russian oil prices changed everything, prompting New Delhi to adjust its purchases. The Indian government is facing severe inflation, when consumer prices have increased by more than 7% for many consecutive months. Besides inflation, India is also suffering with a worsening trade balance. The deficit causes the rupee's value to fall against the dollar. Triple oil is a great help to the Indian government in its fight against inflation and the trade deficit. According to experts, India has long wanted to reduce its dependence on Middle Eastern oil. Not only India, Japan is also looking to increase oil and gas import from Russia in case supply in the Middle East is interrupted due to war, terrorism and blockage of important sea lanes such as the South East Asia Sea, the Gulf of Hamuz or the Strait of Malacca. Recently, India has come under fire from the Muslim world after a spokesman for the ruling BJP party made offensive comments about the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad. 
The comment went viral on social media, angering many golf oil exporters. Muslim countries such as Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and Kuwait denounced the comments as an insult to Islam. Alarmed by criticism from India's main oil suppliers, the BJP punished those who make controversial statements. The BJP also issued a statement saying that it strongly opposes any ideology that offends or debases religions. Increasing oil imports from Russia also helps India increase bargaining leverage with oil producers in the Middle East. Some of the India state-owned companies, such as Baharat Oil, are negotiating with Russia for a long-term oil supply contract. Oil and Gas Corporations of India, which has a stake in Russia's Sakhalin One oil and gas project, may buy back shares of ExxonMobil after the company's decision to withdraw, as well as a 19.75% stake of BP in Rosneft. India's move to increase oil imports from Russia, despite Western pressure to impose sanctions against Moscow, reflects a policy of strategic independence, focusing on national interests through traditional diplomacy and based on the principle of non-alignment. However, the West does not criticize India strongly. During Prime Minister Modi's recent June the 21st a visit to the U.S., Washington did not even mention India's purchase of Russian oil in the joint statement. The West understands that India's move, in addition to bring benefits to the Indian people in Russia, also benefits themselves. In the face of benefits, all criticism becomes silent.